suggestion is dot and quarter equals 60, meaning you get one beat per peak per measure. Um, obviously, don't start working on it that fast. Um, I had my students start out at 8th note equals 90. I want to point out some mistakes in the music. And these are very important to note because the current edition of the bison horn is incorrect. Um, in measure 17, this G natural, the third 16th, should be in A natural. In measure 18, the third note, F natural, should be in E natural. That's listed on um, the official errata as well. So whenever students come in and play this for me, it always sounds like they have a hammer in their hand and it's like ba -da 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 -da, and it's so aggressive and so annoying. Um, you want to make this resolute definitely, but you also want to make sure that it sounds nice and buoyant and bouncy. I often hear these eighth notes with the uh, with the accent marking just articulated to the point where they're resonant lips, if that's even a word. Um, so make sure that those notes have a definite accented start, but that the body of the note is full and buoyant. You'll notice that in measures 9 through 17, you have a variety of uh, slur groupings. It's very important that these sound very crisp and obvious to your judges. And so what you should do is just push a little burst of air on the first note of every single slur grouping. So here's what it sounds like at a perform or at a, I'm sorry, at a practice tempo. Go back 
back to your register slurs. I'm sure that we've all played those before. Um, and what I want you to focus on is, especially the register slurs for your C, your F, and your E. And I want you to voice those notes the same way that you would voice the lowest fundamental that you start on. Um, oftentimes we tend to squeeze to get up to those notes and we don't need to. We need to stay nice and open. Now, the jumps in here are very difficult, and I think that's where most of you are going to have the hard time. Um, we have two different jumps in here that are really tricky. You have the eighth note at the end of most measures that um, go down an octave to the lower note, just like that, and G to G. And then you have these two leaps in measure four and measure eight that exceed an octave. Um, you're going to notice that you're squeaking on these, <laughs> probably, I would assume, because I don't think I've ever had a student not squeak on these before we've had to, you know, work through it with some fundamental things. Um, make sure that you're moving your ear fast, obviously, but also make sure that you are counteracting any sort of biting movement that you might be doing in your jaw by simply opening. Now guys, like I said, I'm not a full-time bass clarinet player. I basically play the bass um, whenever I get gigs on it, um, which honestly isn't, quite free, isn't too frequent. So these last four bars felt weird to me. Um, the amount that I'm having to open my jaw is ridiculous. I almost felt like once I got to bar, uh, bar five, that I had a balloon in the back of my mouth. It was very small. And then after every bar passed by, it's getting larger and larger and larger. And by the time I get from this A to the low F, I almost feel like I'm going to swallow the back of my tongue. Everything is so low in order to get that to speak. So always make sure that your jaw is nice and open and no punching. If you feel like you're doing all of your fundamentals correctly and this line still isn't working for you, I would encourage you to just double check the amount of read that you have in your mouth. Anytime I go into a school to work with bass or contra clarinet students, the number one um, fundamental issue they might have is that they don't play with enough mouthpiece in their mouth. And the reason why is we all started as clarinet players, right? And on clarinet, I mean, you have to have a good bit of read in your mouth, but not the same amount that you do on bass or contra. A good way to check for this is to insert a business card between the tip of your read and the tip of the mouthpiece. You push down ever so gently until you feel that point where the read and the mouthpiece touch each other. I drew a line here, which I guess you can kind of see, um, that indicates where that point is. Draw a line on your read as well. That line is the place that touches the mouth, right here. A lot of times when I see students come in, they have the line about right here. And so what's happening is only that much read is vibrating instead of that much read. That's a really good quick fix for um, sound and all of these leaves in general. As usual, I like to write exercises based on etudes. Um, so these are two, um, this is the first exercise that I work on with students, and it is meant to target one of the difficult places with the leaps. Um, it targets this octave leap that happens between the eighth note of just about every bar to the first sixteenth of the next. What you want to do is you want to focus on getting to that low note cleanly, and then breathing and then restarting it exactly where you left off, with the same jaw position, the same voicing. You want to memorize exactly where to place these notes. The second exercise is something that I lovingly call the middleman exercise. And it targets these um, leaps in the eighth notes that, as that ascend more than, or I'm sorry, that descend more than an octave. So, like I said, the biggest problem with those is the dramatic change that you have to feel in your jaw. I mean, even if you're open, you've got to get more open. So, my students often have a really hard time understanding how much they have to open. So, what I found was useful was to insert a middle note between the two notes that are actually written so that they can lower a little bit. And then again, 
And having them do that in that incremental way helps them kind of measure out exactly how much they will need to open up in order to get these notes to respond. Just some final tips. Um, enjoy the music. These are two wonderful etudes. And you want to spend some time focusing on, you know, maybe an emotion or something that you get out of it. Hopefully it's not like anxiety. Um, but you want to focus on communicating some sort of emotion or some sort of, some sort of story into the music so that your listeners can perceive that. It makes it really cool to listen to you guys play when you can tell you're trying to tell us a story. Practice early and practice often. Um, you guys are about to get really busy here in the next couple of weeks. And I know just as well as you do how little practice time um, there is in the fall. Make sure that you spend a little bit of time every day on this music. I promise that if you don't practice every day, the Allstate Band just won't happen. You really do have to schedule a religious practice time that you're going to go to every day and treat it just like your economics homework. You've got to be there. You've got to get it done. If you don't have time, maybe just work on a little bit. Like maybe just spend a minute on just one little bar that always gets you. You want to try to keep all of those problem places under your fingers. Use the metronome. We are awful at um, measuring things by sight. <clears throat> I know because I'm trying to learn how to sew, and I found that I'm very bad at it because I don't like to take the time to measure things out before I begin. Guys, you might think you know how long a quarter note lasts, but when you're nervous and when you are under a lot of pressure, those quarter notes are going to get a, wonk, a little wonky. They'll probably look like the pillows in my living room, which are like, and they were all supposed to be the same size. Um, so use the metronome in every practice session so that you really memorize the feel of the piece at a very measured, accurate rate. Practice performing for your friends, your enemies, your loved ones, anyone that you can get into a room and sit them down and play for them for five minutes, do it. Because the more that you practice this music in front of people, the easier it's going to be performing when you have to do it for real in front of a judge. Or five judges. I can't remember how many there are for ATSSB. Um, so just make sure that you practice performing. All right, other than that, good luck. Does anyone have any questions for me? I'd be more than happy to answer anything. Mm -hmm. All right, well, good luck, guys, and have a great um, remainder of your stay at TVA.